All right, I uh, starting to populate this board a little bit, and uh, just kind of wanted to show how I go about doing that. Hopefully, you can see it in the camera. But I like to kind of get them in nice and neat if I can. Getting stuck on the other turret. I already got the, one of them installed. Kind of hard to do with this camera in the way. Something like that. Try to keep the values up top. Sorry if my arm's in the way. We I like to just get a, like a half a wrap around the turret there and kind of clamp it down so it's got good physical contact. And at least looks somewhat decent. Something like that. Let's see if I can. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't have anything else to set it on. <laughs> Let's see. Try it like that. Eh, maybe that'll work so you can see. like to get around to the back of the turret and let the flotter, solder, flotter, solder flow uh, around the turret like that if I can. You don't need a lot of solder on there takes a sec for it to heat up uh, just about like so you don't need a great big glob on there did have my air machine going but uh, making a video it's probably all you'd hear is the air machine 
I use the ro roach clip, I'm going to call it a roach clip, uh, for a heat sink. My gra grandfather taught me that way back in the day. When I was like uh, 12, I had an electric guitar that didn't work. And of course, at 12 years old, you don't know nothing. And it had bro broken electronics in, in it. And Grandpa decided he was going to help me fix it and teach me how to solder. And he did. So hopefully you can see that. Let's see if I can get it in the camera. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a little better. See the side of the turret there. Don't need a whole bunch of solder on there. Still got to put a slope resistor here. And... But anyway, I thought I'd show how I go about doing that and populate the board. Got all the nuts on the back of the board. And... I like these screw-in kind because I uh, I. Uh, I tap the board also and screw the turret down in with a little tap and uh, you know I've seen turrets fall out I've seen uh, you know the kind that are pressed into the board I've seen them fall out I've seen eyelets fall out and this ain't no guarantee but I like to think that it's a little safer they're a little more expensive and you, you could say oh yeah the nut will vibrate off and fall in your chassis and get all over the place yeah yeah it could happen but with a little loctite on there hopefully not that's all you can do you can't make it absolutely perfect you're gonna have mishaps no matter what you do But anyway, thought I'd show that. Maybe I'll put in that uh, slope resistor and see if I can find one of those. Need a hundred K for that. Little pink guy. We'll use a carbon film for the slope resistor <clears throat> clean up the lead a little bit my grandfather was an electrician uh, Air Force Base I better not say which one uh, working on jets and such you know airplanes Gotta know how to solder back in the old days during the Korean War. Oop. I wrap them around, sometimes I don't get them down in the groove around the turret. Basically, because this camera's kind of in my way, and I don't see as good as I used to do. I <laughs> wish I could still see decent, but I don't. Even with my glasses, I'm a little blind. That's not too bad. 
nip the leads off there. Maybe I can make it look a little better. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I have no idea because I ain't watching the camera at all. just solder this lug because I still got to put uh, 100k here for load resistors or plate resistors whatever you want to call them so I won't solder that lug quite yet <laughs> need to get me a little standy or something see that or not. Maybe that'll be okay. Putting a little heat sink on there is just kind of protects your uh, your component from getting too hot hopefully. But as long as your soldering iron's hot enough, get on there and get off of there fairly quick, hopefully. There we go. There we got some flow going. Got the flow. see that okay all right well I'm probably gonna stop there I can't have the camera watch me do the whole thing It'd be a pain in the rear Plus, I don't think I got my camera's got enough memory for that. So anyway, if you watch this little segment, uh, thanks for watching. All right. Well, I just wanted to make another segment on this uh, amplifier. I wanted to show that I, before I got too far along, that I got the board all populated here. That's what it looks like. Got my royal blue synergy coupling caps going there. Except I didn't have enough. So on the end here, ugh, sorry, pardon me, my nose is going. Down. I had to use a couple of Sozos. I ran out of <clears throat> the point one caps, the Synergy ones. Thought I had enough in my stash, but I didn't. So I'll use a couple of those. Should be okay. anyway oh yeah I'm trying these mod I usually use uh, sprigs the little black guys with the green wiring but uh, antique electronics was all out of stock when I had to order and 
and all. They had these mod ones, and so I, okay, I'll try them. They'll work. So we'll give those a whirl too. Anyway, that's how that's going. I was gonna do some some input jacks. I thought maybe I'd show a little bit of that. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I take my little sandpaper. I think this is just th thousand grit. And scuff them up a little bit. Get the. I don't know if they put a coating on these things or not. I like to scuff them up a little bit. I got my amp all taped up here. Chassis so I don't Hopefully I don't mess up my fancy looking faceplate. Anyway, let's see if I can find a resistor. Hopefully I'm doing this on camera. I get my hands up here. Maybe it'll be better. So this is just a one meg. One meg resistor. And let's see, what can I use? Probably too fat. Let's run that around something like that. And uh, something like that. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. And you want to run your lead here that you bent through the middle lug here. Something like that. Hopefully you do a prettier job than I do. Something like that. Then grab this old guy so I can hold it my old hunk of junk here yes Can't see that. Wires. Oh, come on. Don't 
take much. down a little bit and put this one in the amp if I can get it in there there we go a little nut Tight, tight, just finger tight. Let's see. I already scuffed this one up, I guess. Go through there, through your middle lug. Get that one in there. See if I can bend that one back a little bit so they sit a little more evenly. It's not bad. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. I don't know if I'm in a very good camera view or not. My hands are going to be in the way for sure. I'm just running a nut on the back side there. around Put a little wrap there and give it a little crimp something like that off. Give that a little bit more crimp. Something like that. Doesn't look like I soldered that one very good, so let's try that again. I haven't done this for quite a while. Fender style. style input let's see so this is a 68k and that down through there and Crimp that to the lug, J hook type thingy. If I can manage it. 
Bence Are you making dinner? Yeah, one or two. Just one. Are you gonna stay there or not? Tack that down just a little bit. I hope I'm getting this in the camera. I know I keep saying that, don't I? There we go. One more. sanded that, did I? I don't remember everything. center there if I can. Ugh. A little pain in the rear. Can't get my lead through there. Because I've done flared out enough or something. Come on, go through there for me. lined up. Doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. This thing's got some pretty long leads on them. I'm putting it in the wrong side. Dang, I'm really messing up. <laughs> Try it again. There we go. Not going too smooth for me. To get them somewhat lined up. Crimp that down best I can. There, that looks a little better. Sorry for the delay there. don't have to use one watt resistors on something like this but it's what I have so that's what I'm using there get these a little twist up Until I 
get them fully soldered and mounted up in the back side there. Just clip them there. needs a little bit. And there it is. When I get them mounted in the back side and stuff I'll solder everything down solid and should be good to go. I remember years ago, a long time ago, I never thought of using the, you know, the chassis as a, a mount to help you do this. <laughs> and I, I seen somebody on YouTube talk about it and say that, or I read it on a forum or something. I was like, oh yeah, that would be the right way to go because then your you know your positioning is your po <clears throat> positioning is pretty pretty good right from the get go alright there it is hopefully it's not too ugly pretty quick to do it. <clears throat> this blue painter's tape comes in handy. Alright, well there's that. Uh, what else can I say on this segment? Well, if I showed that I got the power transformer, let me turn it around like this. I think I'm going to put this thing in my amp cradle at this point, so it's. But yeah, I got the power transformer wired in pretty pretty much bias boards wired in hopefully you can see that that went really easy and smooth but there's not a lot to it so board will sit in there something like that I think I'll put it in my amp. I got an amp cradle and I think I'll set that in there at this point. It might be easier to work on and get all my wiring points from the board into the pots and into the back side stuff here. I got the back plate for the chassis but I haven't put it on yet obviously and probably need to do that pretty quick. All right, well, that'll do it for this segment, I believe. Uh, thanks for watching if you watched. Bye. All right, I wanted to stop at this point and kind of show what I've got before I get too far along here. Show a progress report. I just got finished wiring up the reverb transformer hopefully you can see that in there comes out of this little black grommet and hooks to the RCA jacks here and to the reverb driver tube 
and out to the reverb recovery. One side of a one side of a 12AX7. But anyway, kind of wanted to show what I've got going. Still haven't hooked up the power and I put the the back plate on, you can't see it because it's sitting in the amp cradle. My little little clamp for a little extra uh, stability in there. Put uh, shield shielded uh, wires for the V1 and V2 in and out. So from the input out to the volume pot. And, uh, I use this uh, aircraft grade shielded wire. It's really good stuff. It's a little pricey, but it's it's good stuff. Haven't hooked up any of the controls yet, really. Just the basics, in and out. And, uh, yeah. No power hooked up yet. No speakers hooked up yet. Just did the reverb transformer. No hooked up to the, to the phase inverter yet. But I just wanted to show and kind of give a progress report. It's kind of what she's looking like. Moving along. Hopefully you can see everything okay. I was getting quite a ways along and uh, I wasn't thinking about video at all, <laughs> as I do. And I thought, oh shit, I'm getting pretty far along here. I better make a video compared to the last one I made. I did find a design flaw uh, in Mojo Tone's chassis for the Deluxe Reverb. Uh, where this fuse holder goes is directly over V7 power tube which is I, uh, I consider that a design flaw. They should have moved it over another inch, inch and a quarter and put it in between the two power tubes at least or maybe even put it between uh, the the oh shit this is what happens when you get old you, you, you look you get brain farts you, it just happens uh, rectifier tube and V8 you know they could have put it here which would have been a lot more room or here even but no they had to put it directly centered right over V7 there that's easy I considered punching a hole in the chassis and relocating which I you know I still might do uh, I also have some fuse holders that are horizontal that I could mount in there and just bag this hole all together. I could do something like that. But I don't know. I may go with this the way it is. Just shield it real good with some uh, shrink tube and uh, hope for the best. It should be okay. I mean. 
it's just a little close to my heaters there. It is AC, so. But, yeah, it would have been nicer maybe over here or over here. Oh, well. I think they, if anyone from Mojo Tone sees this eventually, they might consider moving the hole a little bit. Maybe, maybe between, probably between the rectifier and the V8 would probably be a good spot, I think. Alright, well there's my complaint. Uh, everything else so far is fine. Uh, I should mention that uh, the output transformer that I ordered from Mercury Magnetics uh, is a little bit larger mount uh, than what Mojo Tone planned for in their mount holes. So I had to drill another hole about a half an inch about a half an inch larger than what Mojo Tone's uh, drilling is. But that that's no biggie. But uh, if anybody buys the Mercury Magnetic Transformers and a Mojo Tone Transformer, you're going to have to do that. The mounting is slightly different. Uh, the Power Transformer is not. It mounts right up perfect, no trouble. Uh, the choke and the reverb uh, driver transformer are hook up no problem, bolt bolt up no problem also. So uh, the other thing is is the the primary and the secondary wires of the output transformer uh, they're a little long on the back side backs the way they come out of the transformer they're a little long on the back side uh, of the chassis but workable still a little longer than I would prefer uh, I'd like to have them come out right next to the you know right next to the uh, transformer but that's okay Especially the uh, the blue, brown, and red wire on one on the uh, one side of the transformer, uh, they're a little. It's a little bit of a, a reach. The reverb transfer transformer is uh, not like that, and the choke is not like that. They they're both really good, and the power transformer is good. The only trouble I had with wiring and mount that I can complain about, I guess, is the output transformer. And it, I, it's not Mojo Tone's fault, and it's not Mercury Magnetic's fault. It's just uh, when you put the two together, there, you know, the design is slightly different. That's all. So you have to deal. But anyway, I think that's all I can say for this segment. Uh, still got quite a ways to go. I gotta run all these wires off V1, V2, V, <coughs> V4, pardon me, and V5, and the power tubes. Rectifier's good to go. Uh, still gotta wire up this side of the board to the controls, get everything soldered in. So I'm still a long ways out, but uh, that's the progress report so far. Alright, well, uh, thanks for watching if you watched. Uh, bye.